hidden deep inside the Everglades. There is uh, this Cold War era missile site and today we are going to visit it. The Nike Missile Site HM69. Coming up next. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Well, we've arrived uh, fashionably late. Not so fashionably, perhaps. Anyways, this is the Daniel Beard Research Center, uh, formerly part of the military facility. Here we can see the missile site in the distance and something the soldiers wrote on the concrete. There seems to be some kind of animosity between the National Park Service and the Research Center because the ranger was quick to point out that the Research Center doesn't allow us to park or use their restrooms. It would be nice, since it is pretty much empty. We drive about two miles to the actual missile site. Our very knowledgeable ranger unlocks the gate and we park inside, on the side of the road. Here's a replica of the original warning sign, you know, warning everybody to keep out. This facility was built here in 1964, at the height of the Cold War, right right after the Cuban Missile Crisis. First, we approach uh, the, the guard door kennel and the missile assembly building. Security was extremely tight here. I think the, the ranger said that the dogs were trained pretty much to kill and only responded to their trainer. By the way, this is the missile assembly building right here. They only responded to the handler, sometimes not real well to the handler, they didn't care. Next, we're gonna walk to one of the three missile barns. There they are. I think this is supposed to be a mosquito painted on the ground, you know, painted by a soldier stationed here. Actually, in the summer, which is most of the year, the mosquitoes are legendary around these parts. Here's a photograph of the era, describing how the missile worked and all that stuff. Very cool. And now he's opening the barn with the help of the younger ones. We laid at an uh, army surplus yard in Anniston, Alabama for decades. Took us a while to get it. It's been here about five years at a local aviation high school. And here's what we came to see. The Nike Hercules missile. Behind us, photograph, passport stamp, electronics equipment. Be my guest. On the other side of this barn, right there, there's a steel that we have right they have all this uh, Cold War era equipment here. I find it fascinating, actually. It's like stepping into a time capsule. Uh, and imagine what it must have been like around here in the 1960s and 1970s. Here are some other missile components. Missile booster fins. This is an actual booster right here. And this is the original sign that stood outside, Spanish misspellings and all. More photos of the era and memorabilia. Very, very cool. 
If you happen to be in the Everglades in the winter, this is something you should visit for sure. Nimbo 305. These are the tracks where the missiles used to go. They give these tours here from December to April and basically you just show up at the time that it says on the website and that's that, it is a free tour. Well that was really cool, yet another uh, reason to come to the Everglades. We go back to the car. Before we leave, the ranger actually encourages us to drive around so we can see the entire site. This here, that's where we just were. There's another barn in the distance. And uh, here's the third one. It looks like the National Park Service is using it for boat trailer storage. And this one for canoe storage. <laughs> well, I hope you have enjoyed this short video about this off the beaten path point of interest here in the middle of the Everglades. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.